Hey, what's going on guys? Like Butter here and finally I'm going to be sharing with you guys my Dark Zone video. Uh man, it feels good to finally be showing this uh build because I've been working on it for a while and uh, I'm really really excited with the way that it came out. Um so there's a couple of different ways that you can build this. Um and I'm going to go through that with you guys depending on playstyle and depending on kind of what you like as a player. Cuz remember Vision's a, an RPG, and it, it totally molded around the type of player that you want to be. So uh, let's get right into the build. This is a four-piece system corruption build. This obviously is specifically for the Dark Zone. Um, I tried this in heroic content. It actually works, uh, which is interesting, considering SMGs are really, really, really hard to make work in heroic content right now because of how still overtuned the AI are in some of the areas uh, of some of the missions if you're not using like, you know, a really strong long range weapon that you can stay away from people uh, and do large amounts of damage. It's interesting that it works, but regardless, this is just for the dark zone. This will very easily clear PVE content. It's made specifically for PVE and PVP. Now there's a couple different variations. You can use some different weapons here. I really, really like the uh, CMMG Banshee. This is a new SMG that just got added into the game with Warlords in New York. Um, so I have a absolute God roll on this. Now, if you are playing for PVP, you might want to go damage to targets out of cover here. Um, that's definitely pretty strong. So uh, if you want to do that, you can. Uh, if you want to do armor damage, you can. It's all dependent on your playstyle. But I had crit damage that came on this. This thing was beautiful, so uh, I decided to keep the crit damage on it. And I've been trying some different talents. Now, this talent here on the Banshee is really good for PVE. Now, if you were doing primarily PVP in the Dark Zone or potentially both, you probably wouldn't run this talent. This talent is specifically for PVE. Um, and basically, what it's going to do is it's going to give you more. Uh, armor regen on top of the armor regen that you're going to have and the health on kill and it is really really good for pve now in your secondary slot you can run the chatterbox i was actually uh running the vector as my secondary as well uh maybe more for pvp if you're trying to do strained with the vector um that's like strained is more of a talent that you want to run or like something like optimist if you're just specifically playing pvp um, I like to do both. Um, I like to have things in both slots. So that's kind of what we do here. Your, your, your pistol, you can do whatever you want. You could, I mean, you could literally run anything here. It doesn't matter. You're not going to be using it often. So the idea of this build, it is a very tanky, high DPS build. You may be like, what the hell? That doesn't make sense. That shouldn't be that way. The reason is, is because it's all burst damage uh, around uh, Intimidate. And we're going to talk about that here. So, um, in my head slot or my mask slot, I am using the Coyote's Mask. Um, the Coyote's Mask is incredibly, incredibly strong. Um, you get, you can get this from the season, uh, the season level 35 season, or you can farm it from Coyote herself. Um, and this rolled really, really well. This is actually one of my friend Tim's uh, drops. He ended up giving it to me. And this is an absolute amazing roll. So close. Only 0.6% crit chance off of complete god roll. If you don't know what Coyote's Mask does, since I like to play in groups, um, it is a very good group item. If you're playing solo, you might want to go for something like the Hollow Man. Uh, but, you know, I like to play in groups. So this is very, very strong. So if you're hitting anyone from 0 to 15 meters, you're getting plus 25% critical hit damage. That is very, very good considering you're going to be hitting, uh, play, you know, players and AI from zero to 15 meters most of the time. And then if you're hitting them from 15 to 25, you're getting 10% crit damage and 10% crit chance. And then from 25 meters plus, you're getting 25 crit chance, which you will never be doing. You should never be shooting the gun at that range. Um, so we specifically made the build for 50 crit chance total. That's how much crit chance you want. Uh, because you're never going to be going over this amount here. So that crit chance is going to basically put you at the cap. It's going to put you at 60% if you are ever in this range. But, you know, having 25% critical hit damage, 50% um, crit chance is more than enough. It's fine. Um, so for my chest piece, it took me a very long time to get a good one of these. 
you want to basically have armor regeneration on everything that you can. So if you're not running the Coyote's Mask, make sure you have armor regeneration on that mask. Uh, but this rolled pretty low crit damage, but it's only, what, like about 2%? Something like that, 2% from max, 2.7%. Uh, so it, even though this looks like a really bad roll, it ain't that big of a difference in this build. Um, and then you're going to run crit damage in your mods. Unless, of course, you need crit chance. I would be very careful with this because don't forget, guys, um, with your shade levels, you're going to get crit chance, you're going to get crit damage, you're going to get that kind of stuff. So make sure that you're never going over 50% crit chance. That's exactly what you want. So I am running the Sokolov, which gives me the plus 10% uh, SMG damage. And uh, Intimidate, while you have bonus armor, amplifies total weapon damage by 35% to enemies within 10 meters. So think of this as kind of like responsive from Division 1, except 35% weapon damage is a lot of weapon damage. So this is basically how it works you're going to run up into somebody's face your trade you're going to start trading with them you're going to stop shooting for a split second you're going to pop an armor kit and then you're going to do tons and tons of damage you only want to pop it if you really have to or if you're in a 1v1 situation if you're fighting multiple enemies unless they're right next to each other you don't really want to pop this armor kit remember with the system corruption, it is going to give you a armor kit that you can use on the move. You don't have to stop and use an armor kit. But this bonus armor that you get and you can stack it on top of your already, you know, armor bar, which is so, so strong because all of a sudden your 1.1 million armor turns into 2.2 million armor and you get 35% extra damage to enemies within 10 meters, which you're only going to be shooting enemies within 10 meters anyways. So you have the coyote mask going with the crit damage. You have high crit chance, and then you're outputting huge damage since the, your base damage just went through the roof. So this is basically how you work with this build. You want to preserve your armor as much as possible. You're going to see in the footage uh, after I show you all my pieces, kind of the, the way that I use it and uh, the ways that you can use it. But uh, for my holster, I am running uh, system corruption with weapon damage and armor regeneration. So you can see I am running four reds, two blues. You can try some different variations with this if you want to try like, you know, three reds, three blues. The reason I don't do that uh, is because you need enough damage to kill things to get your armor on kill. And armor on kill is effective health, right? So, or effective armor rather. So you're going to be tanky enough just by getting that armor back whenever you're killing enemies or killing players. So I decided to do two blues. Um, it's totally up to you uh, if you want to try, you know, something else. But I would recommend going at least a couple blue pieces because remember, you want your armor to be as high as possible. So the, when you pop that armor kit, you're getting double the effective armor. So if I only have 600,000 armor and I pop the armor kit, I'm going to only have 1.2 million armor. Whereas if I have 1.1 million armor and I pop that armor kit, I'm going to have 2.2 million, right? So that's definitely what you uh, want to build here. So here on my backpack, I have armor. Now here, I really wouldn't want to put crit chance here. Uh, but unfortunately, this is just how the backpack came and I haven't gotten a better version of it. Uh, the reason I don't want to put crit chance here is because my crit chance actually isn't maxed out in my shade levels yet. So that was kind of going to fill in for this. And like I said, you never with this build want to go over 50% crit chance unless you're not using the coyote mask. Um, and then I have armor on kill for my blue mod. Um, you could try uh, armor repair or incoming repairs because a lot of people are really hype about incoming repairs because it's affecting a lot more things than it probably should. I believe on this build specifically, it doesn't affect armor regeneration and it doesn't affect armor on kill. However, it does affect things like clutch and and uh, the true patriot uh, like armor and that kind of stuff, which is which is strange. But yeah, basically. Um, you could run, you know, art. you could try like incoming repairs there, but I tend to go with a little bit of more, you know, a little bit armor on kill, um, a little bit more armor on kill rather. Uh, so 17,800, which doesn't seem like a lot of armor, but when it's stacking with the percentage and it's multiplying with the percentage that you're going to have from the gunner specialization and all that other stuff in the two piece, uh, system protocol, um, or uh, system corruption rather, uh, you're going to notice it a lot. So um, you know, obviously the two piece here, armor percent on kill, 
disrupt resist and pulse resist is really good since a lot of people use the um you know either like the emp pulse or uh they use the banshee pulse which we're going to be using in this build um this will kind of reduce that you know craziness that you get hit with uh because that can be very very difficult to deal with because you basically get inverted and it's very hard to aim uh so for our gloves run a weapon damage uh and then obviously armor regeneration see here we would want armor regen here um if we could and then i could sacrifice that little bit of crit chance and then that armor regen would be really nice because well guess what that's more armor that i'm gaining every single second um so that's good there and then for my knee pads i don't have a max roll here um i do have one on backup but unfortunately i had to roll this so i decided that the armor regeneration was a little bit more worth it than the little bit of extra armor uh but you know obviously if i ever get one that has armor regeneration here if it's like 4400 or 4300 i'll just roll the top attribute for 170k and it'll be good um so that's basically what we got there and for my skills i am running um the defender drone which obviously is going to up my effective health because it's got damage reduction and damage reduction is very very good when you're running a lot of armor and also um you you know for uh, mods on that you can put like i don't know drone health or deflection health that kind of stuff i think that's let me let me make sure what i got on here so duration, scan range, and damage reduction. Yeah, damage reduction is the big one. You want to make sure you can get uh, one of these mods in there because that's going to help you out a lot. And for my second skill is going to be the Banshee Pulse, which is very, very strong for PvP, which you'll see in the gameplay. I ended up going on a solo manhunt um, when I was just, you know, I literally just hopped on, went on a solo manhunt, and I'm, I'm going to show you guys that at the end of this video. Uh, but the reason this is so good is because it inverts their aim and really gives you a huge advantage in close combat and guess what this build is perfect for close combat so that's exactly what you want and uh yeah that banshee pulse basically works in a cone you charge it up and it basically inverts them and, and like disorients them and stuff and you can basically win those trades for free close range sometimes you don't even need to do to use your armor kit um if they're really disoriented so you can kind of make that choice during the fight whether you need to pop it for the extra damage or not usually you probably won't um so then for mods obviously you want to go uh for uh you could use effect duration um effect duration is really good you could do skill haste uh but i'm running uh radius and you could try charge speed i guess i think charge speed might might be uh might be fine for that but i don't think you need it i think the radius is a little bit better um so yeah, that's it for skills. Now, this is what I wanted to talk about. Some of you guys are probably like, oh, you missed the attachments. The reason I want to like kind of wait here is because these attachments, guys, are based on how much crit chance you have. Now, I put crit chance on all my attachments always. Um, you definitely want to get that extended mag if you can. The reason is, is that in slot, crit chance is the absolute best thing to have on your guns unless you need accuracy or stability. The reason is, is because the value of 5% crit chance is not the same as something like 5% crit damage or 5% weapon handling. If you look on gear, on gear you can get, um, you know, up to, let's look here on the mask, you can get up to 6% crit chance on, on your uh, gear, and you can get 12% crit damage, which means the value of crit damage is not the same as crit chance on gear you actually end up getting double crit damage than you do crit chance on gear so why would you put crit damage on your attachments when the best value is to put crit chance so the idea is on your smg put crit chance on everything unless unless you feel like you have too much crit chance which can happen with this build if that's the case i would look at something more like um accuracy Accuracy is really, really good on SMGs because the SMG accuracy is ass. It really is. Like SMGs have really bad accuracy. Um, and if you're increasing that accuracy, you're going to hit more shots. In that case, you're going to do more damage. So that's pretty much the build. The build is really, really strong just to give you guys a look at the stats. Um, so 49.9% crit chance, just almost perfect for 50%. 
Then we have 82.1% critical hit damage, which is so good because you got to remember a lot of times you're going to have 25% crit damage here um, from, you know, from the coyote's mask. So another thing is like if you use strained on your SMG, which you absolutely can, like if I was running this only for PVP ever and I was running in a group, I would roll this for strained, which is why I have the talent modified because I can just change this whenever I want. If I feel like PVP, I'll go change it. If I feel like PVE, I'll go change it. Preservation is very good for PVE. Um, for PVP though, 100% strained or optimist or or even fast hands like fast hands is such an underrated like talent it's crazy especially on a weapon that you have a lot of crit chance on faster reloads means faster dps you know and more dps so uh yeah that's basically the build guys hopefully you enjoy it i have a lot of builds coming up i've been working on a ton of them i'm sorry i haven't posted a video uh, here in a bit. I've just been streaming every single day. Come over to my uh, Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash likebutterlive if you want to kind of see live updates and you want to see me build these builds in, in real time. Uh, yeah, I would love to see you guys there. Um, a couple other modifications before I end the video though. Uh, you could try, so this is a really toxic variation of this build, right? And I haven't made it yet, uh, but I, I'm thinking thinking about possibly doing it which kind of feels icky but right now if you guys haven't figured it out by now if you play in the dark zone well there's this item called imperial dynasty that is quite toxic in the dz and the reason being that it just sets people on fire there's absolutely nothing you need to do just automatically sets people on fire if they're within 20 meters of you closest uh, target so if you're playing you know in a 1v1 situation you're gonna win every single time with this holster it's insane so here's a variation that you guys could try if you're feeling super toxic there is an item that you can get that i don't have yet that i'm gonna work for probably today or tomorrow um it is a chess piece that has perfect intimidate on it that has 40 percent damage to targets within 10 meters instead of 35 and it is a let me see what this uh is. so this set here the golden it's a golden gear set which is plus 10 percent status effects if you run that chess piece and then the imperial dynasty and then you run a system protocol uh sorry a system corruption mask that would be a very toxic variation of this build and it probably is super strong um but i don't know if the imperial dynasty is going to get nerfed or i mean it's a it's a huge talk in the community right now but you could actually run that and then run ignited on your on your smg and it would be pretty strong for like 1v1s like actually just ridiculous um so I may make another version of that build. Uh, that's going to be more of like a, a super toxic build. But this build is an all-around good, skillful build. It reminds me of Division One when I when I'm using this build in the DZ. I feel like I'm playing Division One, and it is damn enjoyable. It is damn enjoyable, and I hope you guys enjoy. I got some gameplay for you guys here where I go on a solo manhunt with this build if you want to check it out. Uh, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to drop the video a like. Let me know what you think in the comment sections below. If you have any suggestions on what you think you could do to make this build a little bit better, I'm always open to sub uh, suggestions. And thanks for watching, guys. I'll talk to you next time. Take care, everybody. One more thing, in case it wasn't obvious, uh, I decided to add this in because I kind of forgot. You want to use the gunner specialization and the foam grenade. These can be very, very useful in PvP. And the gunner specialization is very good because it gives you that extra armor on kill. And uh, it's very strong for, you know, the third reload is 50% faster. So, yeah, just make sure you're specced into SMG and whatever your secondary weapon is uh, damage. And you should be good to go. Cool.
has expired. Hero inbound. Extraction pulled. Status removed. <laughs> 